The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Alexa with Quest, and I would like to thank you for joining us today. For PeopleSoft Fluid UI, it delivers a modern user experience. Today, we have Jenny Blevins presenting from Sierra Cedar. Um, a few housekeeping notes before we get started today. All attendee phone lines will be muted during the presentation, but please submit any questions that you have into the questions dropdown located on your GoToWebinar box. Um, at the end, we are going to take some time to answer those. Uh, the session will also be recorded and will be uploaded to the Quest Content Library. I'm going to send everyone an email with a direct link to download that um, here in the next day or so, so be on the lookout for that. And again, if you are just now getting logged in, you're going to be muted during this session, but we encourage questions and you can um, answer those in the questions drop down. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Jenny. All right. Thank you, Alexa. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining this webinar today. The Fluid UI pages demonstrated in today's session are from PeopleSoft 9.2 Image 25, built on PeopleTools 8.56. My hope is that this session will provide you with a demonstration of the PeopleSoft HCM Fluid User Interface and point out how the UI meets the expectations of today's multi-generational workforce. There will be a few minutes at the end of the webinar for questions and answers, so feel free to submit your questions during the webinar via the chat feature, and we'll address and review those at the end. If there are questions that cannot be answered during the webinar, answers will be provided via email to all participants following the webinar. So let's get started. <clears throat> if you're not already familiar with the Sierra Cedar HR System Survey, I want to introduce you to this great resource. At the end of the presentation, I'll provide information about how to get a copy of the 20th Annual Edition of the Sierra Cedar 2017-2018 HR Systems Survey White Paper for yourself. The 2017-2018 White Paper was compiled around the themes of strategy, culture, and technology. While reviewing the White Paper and hearing what organizations are saying and experiencing today, I was struck how the PeopleSoft Fluid UI really is delivering the modern user experience that organizations and their employees are demanding. I'm an old PeopleSoft Pro, going back to version 7.5, and I think it's really cool how the addition of the Fluid UI has transformed the stable and robust PeopleSoft application. As reported in the Sierra Cedar 2017-2018 HR System Survey white paper, that is a mouthful, today's employees and contingent workers around the globe have higher expectations of employers and they expect constant access to their own employee data and personalized benefits provided by the organization. HR technology and processes play a major role in helping organizations navigate in this era of new openness and personalization. The white paper reports that organizations rolling out mobile access in addition to self-service delivery applications found that their overall adoption levels increased significantly. So it's not a surprise that the survey's three-year application outlook identified many organizations either currently using or are planning in the next three years to utilize administrative and service delivery tools. The PeopleSoft 9.2 Fluid User Interface is one such benefit employers can provide to their employees to help deliver their HR strategy. HR systems are no longer just a tool to do personnel but they're recognized as a strategic tool in their overall HR strategy. By granting access to the PeopleSoft Fluid User Interface, users are exposed to features they've commonly come to expect and see on their phones, tablets, and work devices every day, in their banking applications, their social media, and all aspects of their everyday lives. In this example, I'm logged in as Rosanna Channing. She's familiar with her employee self-service dashboard, which provides access to the company directory, timesheet tools, her pay information, and other self-service processes. Rosanna is also the accounting manager and interacts with her manager self-service fluid homepage on a daily basis to complete tasks and monitor business processes, such as performance management. One of the things Rosanna really likes is the ability to personalize the application to make her life more efficient. Rosanna wants quick access to her team information, her paycheck, 
and the payroll errors report. So Rosanna is going to create a personal homepage where she can access those important tasks right away. She clicks on the actions menu and selects personalize homepage. She clicks the add homepage button and creates a homepage and adds two of the existing self-service tiles to her custom homepage. You can see Rosanna's homepage now has her My Team tile and the Pay tile. But when the payroll process is running, sometimes she needs quick access to run the payroll error message report. So she's going to add a tile to her custom homepage so she can quickly access the Run Control page and submit the report. Using the navigator on the right side of her screen, she navigates from the main menu to Payroll for North America, then Payroll Processing USA, and clicks on the Payroll Error Message Report. The Run Control page for the Payroll Error Message Report is displayed. Rosanna clicks on the Actions menu and then clicks Add to Homepage. She then selects Rosanna's homepage and she's notified that a tile has been added to her homepage. Now, Rosanna's custom fluid homepage has a tile which takes her directly to the run control page for the payroll error message report. Employees and leaders who have come of age in the world of big data have come to expect mobile, social, and personalized capabilities. PeopleSoft's fluid user interface is delivering tools and features to meet these important expectations. For the workforce of today, our personal lives have become more integrated with our work lives, illustrating the points that when HR technology works at its best, it provides the framework through which balance can be achieved by everyone. Let's take a look at an example of the PeopleSoft Fluid UI delivering on this balance and integration. Rosanna Channing, our accounting manager, <clears throat> is out to dinner Tuesday evening with friends when she gets a call that there are some payroll errors that need to be addressed before the final pay calc on Wednesday at noon. Rosanna just finished her salad, so she steps away from the table for a moment to triage the situation. From her phone, Rosanna accesses her company's two-factor authentication to establish a secure connection. The two-factor authentication request sends a push to her phone to validate it is really Rosanna. Once she approves the security request, Rosanna is able to log into PeopleSoft. She clicks the drop-down arrow in her banner bar to change the view from her default MSS homepage to Rosanna's homepage that she created earlier in the day. She clicks the Review Payroll Error Message icon and she's taken to the Run Control page. She enters the current Run ID and clicks Run. From the Process Scheduler page, she clicks OK to submit the process. It'll take a few minutes for the process to run, so she calls the sitter to check on the kids. After the phone call with the sitter, she clicks the Process Monitor to see if the report has finished. The process has run to success, and she clicks the Details link to access the report. Then she clicks the View Log Trace link. Then she selects the PDF from the file list to see the payroll errors report. On her phone, she can view the PDF of the errors and see that the errors are minor enough to be handled on Wednesday morning. She needs to send the report to Heidi Dulles to fix the errors on Wednesday morning. So she decides to send Heidi a copy of the report using the Notify Employee feature. She returns to her custom home page by clicking the Actions menu and selecting Home. Then she touches My Team tile. Rosanna is presented with a list of all her direct reports. But Heidi reports to Christelle Stevenson, so she touches the 13 directs link to drill down to Christelle's reports. On Heidi's card, she sees the drop down actions menu. Then she selects notify employee action. She adds the subject review as soon as possible 
and makes a note to Heidi about fixing these errors before the payroll deadline on Wednesday. Then she clicks the Add Attachment button and clicks My Device, chooses Documents, then clicks the, the Upload button to upload the payroll errors report that she just viewed on her phone. The attachment is uploaded and attached to the notification. She clicks Done. She can see that the PDF was attached to the notification. And after reviewing the notification, she clicks Send. She gets a confirmation asking for if she's sure she wants to send it. She clicks Yes, and then gets a notification that the, that the notification has been sent. Rosanna can rest assured that Heidi will address the issues first thing in the morning. Rosanna signs out of PeopleSoft. And with the payroll issue under control, Rosanna rejoins the group to enjoy the rest of their dinner. We all know this scenario is played out many times over on a daily basis in our busy integrated lives, which demand us to stay on top of work while still participating in the most important things. The Fluid UI provided Rosanna with the tools to quickly and easily meet the obligations and to make better decisions because the necessary information was provided to make an appropriate business decision. On Wednesday morning, Heidi signs into PeopleSoft and sees that she has a pending alert. <clears throat> she looks at the alert. She sees the Rosanna's subject line, review as soon as possible. She opens the alert and sees the message from Rosanna from Tuesday evening with the attachment. She opens the attachment and is able to immediately begin working the errors that are displayed on the error report. Still, making the choice about where to invest your time and money in technology has to be based on more than flash and zing. What about business results? Over the past few years, our group that runs the Sierra Cedar HR System Survey looked at top performing organizations, those with the highest per financial performance, to find high value from HR technologies and associated best pra practices. However, over the last few years, the survey has showed little differences between top performers and all others, leading them to recognize that the effect of just having HR technologies as a competitive advantage has minimized as more organizations adopt the technologies and practices. <clears throat> Instead, they found that how organizations use those technologies has the bigger impact. The new subset of high-performing organizations are called outcome-based organizations, and they were selected based on their behaviors. These organizations have a focused approach to managing HR, a focus that usually aligns with the culture of the organization and how business decisions are made in that organization. For example, talent-driven organizations value critical talent above all else in their culture and they show it through investing in career planning and succession management and measuring critical employee metrics like engagement and talent retention consistently. Or data-driven organizations have cultures that value data when making decisions. Their HR function invests in mature workforce analytic processes using multiple HR metrics in their management efforts and they share the HR analytics freely with the managers. Finally, their most recent outcome-based organizations, the socially responsible organizations, have cultures that value the social perception of their organization. Brand management is critical, and they invest in transformational, socially responsible programs in areas such as diversity, family leave, or employee wellness. <clears throat> The research found that it was rare that any organization was in more than one of these focus categories, and very few organizations made it into any of these categories at just under 100 in each category. There was no predominant size, industry, or type of organization that fell into these 
organiz these categories. This slide shows information with the breakdown of the outcome-based organizations by size. From large organizations with over 10,000 employees, medium organizations with 2,500 to 10,000, and small organizations which had less than 2,500 employees. This shows that size doesn't preclude organizations from implementing this level of focus. And this slide shows some averages for the types of organizations that are in each category. For example, 47% of talent-driven organizations were global organizations, with employees in 27 different countries on average. When we compared all of these organizations against whether their talent, HR, and business outcomes had gone up or down in the past 12 months, we found that our outcome-based organizations consistently had better outcomes in talent, HR, and long-term business areas, such as the ability to increase market share, innovation, or customer satisfaction. These organizations also had consistently higher financial metrics in key areas and better HR relationships with their business leaders. Each of these organizations creates its own level of innovation from process to people, as well as its technology adoption strategies. There are multiple ways to reach business outcomes while staying true to the culture and capabilities of an individual organization. Because the next generation technology is designed to inform our decisions and simplify our activities, it is meant to be invisible and ubiquitous to our lives and help us to achieve a specific outcome. So the line between what organizations want and what they can do may come down to how we use these new applications and the skills we have in-house to fully leverage them. Not surprising, 30% of the outcome-based organizations today are increasing learning, recruiting, and HR data analytics roles to meet these rapidly evolving needs. While the PeopleSoft Fluid User Interface is a technology enabler, the most effective organizations are rolling out higher levels of ESS and MSS support along with help desk technologies to increase the efficiency of their HR support staff to make sure their employees and managers are getting the most out of their HR technology. Organizations which implement self-service technology along with help desk applications are able to serve 66% more workforce per HR administrative staff. And although this combination of technologies delivers the highest level of efficiency for the enterprise, service delivery model, models should be constructed uniquely and specifically based on the needs of the industry and the organization model. Again, a focused approach to HR achieves better outcomes than simply following best practices. Let's take another look at an example of the PeopleSoft Fluid User Interface supporting informed decision-making and simplifying activities for Christelle Stevenson. After being in meetings all day, as Christelle is logging out of the system for the evening, she sees on the approval tile that she has one transaction pending her approval. She is informed without any additional action on her part by the intelligence provided right on the tile. Since she is dashing out the door for the train, she decides to review the pending approval action from her phone while she's on the train home. After she grabs her coffee and is settled into a seat on the train, Christelle logs into PeopleSoft. She clicks the approval tile, which shows one pending approval. She can see the pending approval is for a promotion for May Lee. She can see that her boss, Betty Lockerty, has delegated this approval to Christelle as they had discussed earlier in the day. Since Betty felt that Christelle was more familiar with May Lee's work, she should determine the increase amount. Before moving ahead with the, with the approval transaction, Christelle expands the hidden panel on her phone by clicking the collapsible menu icon. As expected, there's only one pending approval, and it's the one she's working on. So she collapses the left menu again. Christelle reviews the promotion information on her phone. 
It's a small device, but she can clearly view the information about the proposed change, the transaction date, the requester, and the reason. She can see the new job code and job title, as well as the existing job, existing the before job title. By scrolling down on her screen, she can evaluate the current salary and the new proposed salary. She could access the hidden portion of the screen, which would provide more information about the salary change details. But in this case, she's comfortable with the pay change amount. Christelle is well pleased with the increased percentage and makes a note in the approver comments that May Lee is well deserving of the promotion. This note will not be seen by May Lee, but it will be seen by the submitting manager and anyone that reviews the approval of the transaction at a later time. She clicks the, the arrow beside the approval chain to review all the approvals on this approval chain. She sees that she is the final approver and she clicks the X to return to submit the approval transaction by clicking the submit button. She receives the notification that the request was successfully approved. She clicks, clicks the actions menu and returns home to her MSS dashboard. She still has 20 minutes on the train, so she'll take a look at the status of the team performance documents since the due date is coming up in about a week. She clicks on My Team. She then selects the additional content icon to display the available analytics. She scrolls down to see the performance status grid. By clicking the Open in a Separate Window icon, the performance status analytics provides the full picture of her team's progress on the completion of their performance documents. Meanwhile, Betty Lockerty, Christelle's director, is also on her phone while her son is at the dentist, reviewing the way merit increases have been allocated against the performance ratings. Betty clicks the My Team tile from her homepage then clicks the additional content icon. She's interested in the performance versus compa ratio information. Betty can see the pay for performance model looks on track, but there are two outliers. With a rating of five, Cynthia should be receiving a more significant increase as she is barely over the midpoint of the pay range. Betty decides to filter to see a smaller population of performance data. She clicks the filters icon, which displays the filter choices. Betty filters to only see those with a performance rating of three. While a performance rating of three is a good thing, indicating a solid performer, she can see that Nettie is well above the, the midpoint of the pay range. She makes a note to discuss the merit budget allocations for this group to ensure that Cynthia's performance is recognized. Whereas the PeopleSoft of yesteryear was geared more towards power users and casual users, hopefully you can see that the potential to meet the needs of executives by leveraging PeopleSoft Fluid UI and the analytics tools. So as you can see, the Fluid UI is an enabler that ties into the already robust PeopleSoft capabilities. Let me provide some background about the PeopleSoft Fluid UI. The PeopleSoft Fluid User Interface is designed to be a significant enhancement to PeopleSoft's classic user interface, which has been the interface display on browsers for PeopleSoft end users for well over a decade. The PeopleSoft Fluid User Interface moves away from pixel-perfect page layout and provides greater flexibility with the enhanced use of cascading style sheets in HTML5 and JavaScript if needed. PeopleSoft application fluid pages scale gracefully from large screen devices such as laptops and desktops down to the reduced viewing space of tablets and smartphones. Many commercial websites use similar design model where the presentation and layout of information is adjusted dynamically to conform to the dimensions of the user's device. 
The fluid user interface design approach gives developers just this type of control over the user experience. When a larger screen size is detected, a screen with more real estate, the application content will adjust and conform accordingly to fill the space. Similarly, if it's a small screen size, if a small screen size is detected, non-essential information will be removed and the presentation of content will adjust to flow in a very usable fashion. PeopleTools 8.55 dramatically extended the investment in the fluid user experience. New 8.55 features such as fluid dashboards, fluid master detail pages, and the new activity guide framework are quickly being adopted. With the release of Tools 8.56 and PeopleSoft Image 24, Oracle has fully extended the capabilities of PeopleSoft Fluid and converted all classic pages, which are not appropriate for the complexities of Fluid, to Classic Plus, which makes the overall application experience as intuitive as possible for power users as well as self-service users. <clears throat> Let's take a look at four representations of the self-service emergency contacts page. On the upper left, we can see the classic user interface. Menus are across the top. The mouse over pop-up is available on the employee's name. Then the rest of the screen is in scroll areas with grids and buttons. If the user looks at the classic page on a small screen device, they must enlarge and move the screen around to view a portion of the page at a time. On the upper left, we see two shots of the Fluid UI emergency contacts page on an iPad. When the iPad is in landscape mode, there are four icons across the banner bar the home, search, the actions menu, and the navigation icon. On the left panel, the personal details choices are displayed. When the iPad is turned to portrait mode, the home button disappears from the banner. The left panel is collapsed, hiding the personal details choices until needed. In the center of the screen, the details panel displays the emergency contact information for Derek Holsinger. The user can drill down and see emergency contact address and phone number by touching the contact name. Then, on the lower part of the screen, we see the Fluid UI on a desktop computer. In this view, the left panel displaying the personal details choices is fixed on the screen, and the back button includes a label. And the Home, Search, Actions menu, and Navigation bar icons are all available on the banner. Now look at the emergency contacts page on a small phone. The back button loses the label and is replaced by an error, arrow. The actions menu is still available, but the nav bar icon is missing. If you have a screen this small, you probably don't want to use the navigator to get around. All three of the fluid pages have the pop-up actions menu available by clicking the drop-down arrow next to Derek Holsinger's name. Based on the user's security, other available actions will be displayed in the pop-up menu. There is a fundamental difference in the way Fluid pages are created and the way Classic pages are created in App Designer. Classic pages are pixel-based. Fields are placed in specific location in relation to the upper left corner of the screen. On Fluid pages, the page is designed by containers. A container holds a block of fields. The developer is going to specify which fields are mandatory and which fields can be hidden or collapsed. The responsive logic is already built into the container. The interface is still built on components and component interfaces and web services, but the mobile application platform is what pulls it all together and determines how to render the page. Let's discuss more of the key features of the Fluid UI. The banner across the top houses the objects that drive you around the system. The user is able to navigate between dashboards using the drop down in the center of the banner or by swiping the page from left to right on a touch screen. The notifications icon takes very little real estate but provides quick access to important alerts and transactions that require action. The Actions menu provides specific content, such as help and personalization options, based on the page that is currently being displayed. 
the real estate for the actions menu has been reduced in tools 8.56 by changing it from a list icon, which was sometimes referred to as a hamburger, to three vertical dots. The home page tiles direct you to key tasks and processes while delivering content without having any user interaction. For example, on the team performance tile, we can see that there are 23 documents in progress. If Betty clicks the refresh curly queue at the bottom right, all of the information on the tiles will be refreshed. For us old PeopleSoft users, the way of navigating in PeopleSoft can create some stressful reactions. I've heard it over and over, and I myself have complained while trying to adjust to the change. It might seem like a world without gravity for a bit, but give it a try and give it some time and you will be able to adjust. Users that have never known the old breadcrumbs will not know what all the fuss was about. For example, Betty knows there is a performance analytics, but she only uses it during the performance cycle and she can't recall the navigation. So she, to try, she decides to try the search icon. Betty enters the word performance in the search bar and clicks the double arrow to generate the search. A, a view search results page is returned showing several items in PeopleSoft related to performance. Betty peruses the list and sees the team performance status with an icon of a pie chart and a description saying, displays the summary of the performance document statuses in a pivot. And it specifies that this is for the HCM application, so she selects it. And immediately, it delivers the analytics based on her position in the organization and her security. With the fields listed on the left and the settings icon on the right, Betty is able to interact with the pivot grid to drill down to the specific information she needs. From the banner bar, all of the home page dashboards that a user has access to can be displayed. Home page dashboards can be created for power users, casual users, and executives to deliver the most useful information quickly and all based on the user's security. The navigation bar is another way to access information. It contains nav bar tiles such as my recent pages, my favorites, and the navigator icon. Clicking on the nav bar tiles will display a second level of content. The second level content will either transfer the user to another page or open a modal window. Betty needs to keep track of the headcount movement, so she will add this to her navbar. She clicks the navbar settings icon. Then she clicks the add tile button. She drills down to the analytics content and selects the headcount movement pivot grid. The headcount movement pivot grid has been added to her nav bar, but she would really like it to be closer to the top. So she drags it right up above company directory. Happy with the placement of the headcount movement on her nav bar, she clicks done. And immediately the headcount movement pivot grid is available from the nav, nav bar. As you can see, the fluid user interface transforms the way users interact with PeopleSoft. When organizations were first introduced to the fluid UI, they were a little reluctant to roll it out to the user community for fear of the chaos and a huge organizational change effort. But time after time, users have embraced the Fluid user interface. In the last two Fluid projects I've participated on, the users had very positive reactions to the interface and the ability to access information on the devices that they work with every day. This concludes the Fluid user interface information. But before we move into the Q&A, I have a few housekeeping items I would like to share. 
One, as I mentioned earlier in the webcast, you may have heard about the new PeopleSoft pages called Classic Plus Pages. As Oracle has replaced PeopleSoft pages with a dynamic, responsive, fluid user interface, there were some pages in PeopleSoft that are just not designed to be used on a smartphone or tablet. So classic pages, which were not redesigned in Fluid, were instead given the look and feel and style of Fluid. These pages are called Classic Plus Pages. While the Classic Plus page smooths out the user experience when moving from Fluid to non-Fluid pages, the Classic Plus pages do not automatically and responsively and dynamically render across all device types. For more information about the Classic Plus pages, access the, or the information on Oracle's website at the link shown. Second, I want to be sure you know where to get the Sierra Cedar HR system survey. It's free, so please visit www.sierra-cedar.com and click the HR system survey at the top of the site to find out how to get a copy and participate in this year's survey. And finally, if you're already on PeopleSoft 9.2 and want to learn more about how to get and stay current using the PeopleSoft Update Manager, otherwise known as PUM, please contact Teresa Kaufman for more information. At this time, I'd like to turn it back over to Alexa so we can entertain any questions and answers, questions that you might have. Thank you so much, Jenny. Um, we did have one question that has come through so far, and for anyone else that okay. has any questions, um, please go ahead and submit those now. Um, let's see here. The first question is, uh, if Fluid UI is not act activated, can you still turn on the Classic Plus pages? If the Fluid UI is not activated, can you still turn on the Classic Plus pages? That is a question I will have to take back. Um, what I know about it is with Image 25, Classic Plus was delivered, and there's two ways to turn it on. You can turn it on at a global level, and then you can turn it on at a page-specific level. Since I'm not technical, I don't have all the details specifically on how to do that, so that's a question I would like to take back and get a proper answer to provide. Okay, no problem at all. Um, another question that just came through, uh, when will the hamburger icon change to the three dot icon again? That, the change from the hamburger icon to the three dots happened with People Tools 8.56. So when you migrate to Tools 8.56, you'll see the three dots instead of the hamburger. Okay, awesome. Um, and that is the only two questions that I've seen that have come through. Uh, while we're waiting on any last questions to come through, um, again, this session was recorded for everyone and will be uploaded to the Quest Content Library. Um, I'm also going to send a link for everyone to download that once it's available here in the next day or two. So be on the lookout for that. Um, let's see here. We did just have another couple questions that shot through. Um, can a work center be a tile? Yes. Yes, any page that you can pull up, you can make a tile. Okay, wonderful. Um, also another one, um, has anyone done a full integration hub implementation with Fluid? And if so, what issues do you have when using managed content displaying in home pages? Can you repeat that one? Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. That might be, that sounds pretty uh, technical. Let's see here. Has <laughs> anyone done a full integration hub implementation with Fluid? And if so, what issues do you have with using managed content displaying in homepage? I, I can't answer the integration with the hub per se, but I can tell you that the content that you have on your fluid tiles is something you want to look at very carefully because if you're if you have um, analytics that are pulling up detail that's like a big hog of a query it will create some performance issues so you have to really um, spend some time if you if you do custom analytics on your tiles to make sure that your process that's pulling that data is efficient and not you know, 
so many on your home page that it creates an issue and one of the ways you can do that is by keeping your home pages specific to the to different user functions instead of having one home page tile that has everything on it ha uh, get use the drop down at the top but for the dashboards and have different dashboards so you're not having all of that content you know trying to pull in at the same time okay great um and with the tiles someone said you have got you've got nice graphics on your tiles how do we add those that's um a, what you can do is when you're creating your um, your tiles, there's a way that you can go into PeopleSoft and add your own images. And I can send you some information about how to do that, but um, the last project I was on, they all had specific um, images that they wanted for their different types of things. And um, it really adds a part of your branding flair so it's it's a very nice feature uh, and it just takes a little time to get the type of image that you want to make sure that it's the correct size so it displays properly um, but it's very easy you can change those out it's very simple okay great um, and with that is there a way to add uh, default tiles to user homepage to make it easier on the users Yes, there is. When you're creating your home page, you have the option of making your tiles default tiles or optional tiles. So, you know, that's one of the ways that you can do it. And also allowing them the personalization to create their own page, own home page, just like we did with Rosanna Channing. Okay, awesome. Um, will user favorites remain in the fluid interface or will users need to add again? From my um, from my experience, it's it remains there. You just bring those forward like you would when you're doing an upgrade or whatever. Make sure that the favorites come forward and they're there by default. But you can you can customize when you're rolling out fluid what you want to show up on that nav bar tile because there may be some things you really just don't want people to mess around with, and you can pull those away. So it's completely configurable before you roll it out to your user population and based on security. So if you have some people that you want to give more personalization options to than others, you certainly can configure that. Okay, thanks so much. Um, let's see, we have had a couple more questions come in. Um, what image format did you use? I, we, we, these um, screenshots were taken off of Image 25, People Tools 8.56. Okay, thanks so much. Um, is it advisable to use the Fluid Tile version on implementing PeopleSoft Portal, iHub, or Going Classic? That's a question I'll probably have to take back and get some better answers for you. I have not had as much experience myself with the iHub. Okay, that's no problem at all. Um, let's see here. How does the PeopleSoft Portal integration hub work with fluid with uh, HCM and an FSCM you are able if you have your um, applications connected through um, the integration broker and through the synchronization that's delivered through that you can have icons on your desktops that are not just from PeopleSoft HCM so there is definitely the capability to have an icon where you where you are a dashboard where you can see your HR functionality as well as some of the um, financial functionality as well wonderful thanks so much um, it looks like those are the last couple questions that came in. Um, again, if anyone does have any questions after, oh, I spoke too soon. Let's see, we do have another one. Um, going forward, whether classic pages will not be supported by Oracle PeopleSoft, I'm sorry, going forward, will classic pages not be supported by Oracle PeopleSoft? There is a point in time that the support for classic pages runs out. I, I'm not right off the top of my head familiar with that, but but Oracle is encouraging people to switch to the classic plus, plus pages as soon as possible, which is not, it does have a few things that you really have to take into consideration. If you've customized the classic pages 
and it's you're going to move into classic plus you're going to have to do an analysis to look at what the classic page looks like your customization and how to retrofit that so um, i was at the oracle conference in uh, october and they spoke about this and um, i like the way the um the gentleman that was speaking described it he said it's kind of like your kids you know um, you're really proud of them but sometimes you know there's just some things you just got to get through like their adolescence and this is one of those things that the switch from classic to classic plus is something that you'll have to uh, analyze and see how it's going to impact your organization but the sooner you do it the better because the peoplesoft update manager continues to send you um, new functionality you know enhancements and so forth and so the sooner you can get on that same app that same platform the easier it's going to be going forward but that is a little bit of a hiccup to deal with okay um and something else that just came through you mentioned all classic pages were replaced is that on um, hcm or financial this is specific to hcm i'm not sure exactly where they are on that on the financial side so and it was with image 24 that they have delivered either all the pages were either fluid or if it was a page that doesn't make sense for fluid and typically that's pages that have a lot of scroll bars um, you know have a lot of detail on those pages those were the ones that they moved to classic plus and you have to kind of make a decision on how you're going to implement those but that happened with image 24 and then of course image 25 is already out so they're continuing to um, enhance and work out the little kinks. Okay, great. Um, and again, I think those were the last questions that came in, but if anyone does have any uh, final questions, please submit those now. Or if you have any questions that you think of after the session is over, feel free to send those my way and I'll pass those along to Jenny. Um, Jenny, thank you so much for presenting with us today. Um, and thank you to all of the attendees on the line. Again, I will send out the recording to this session here in the next day or two, so be on the lookout for that. Um, right, and I and also Alexa, I will try to get back to everyone with the questions that they have because I'm I don't have experience in all of the areas, so I'll I will um, solicit an answer and reply to that person specifically, and we can either reply to the whole audience or to that person individually as you see fit. Okay, that'd be great. So yes, we will get back with you um, on some of those more technical questions that were asked. Um, so again, thanks everybody so much. And thank you so much, Jenny. Um, I hope to see everyone on the next Quest online learning session and have a great rest of your day. All right, thanks. Thank you. <clears throat>